Hello, guys. Welcome back uh, to another episode of the Living for His Glory podcast, or just my YouTube if you're watching through that. Uh, thank you so much for another week as we begin the month of December. I have a brand new series I want to start. Uh, I kind of want to bleed into uh, January as well, but uh, this is going to be a fun one. We're going to call it Niebuhr Month and and uh, inspired by, you know, the, the theologian uh, Richard Niebuhr, who is the reason why we're talking about this at all. And uh, Richard Niebuhr uh, is is amazing. And he he really was able to break down five amazing views of and five amazing relationships between Christ and and the culture that we live in right now. And neither one of these um, views or relationships is wrong per se, but they're all but they are all right. They're all shown throughout the Bible. And I'm very excited to get into it. Niebuhr Month is going to be a real treat uh, for those of you who haven't heard it. And I believe that even if you have heard about Niebuhr and his five views about you know the Christ and the culture. I believe a little refresher. I think I think you'll enjoy this. This little uh, Niebuhr month that we're going to get into is going to be uh, one heck of a month that you will enjoy and that you will learn something from inevitably. And I'm sure I will learn some more stuff as I dive deeper into it, man. I love Niebuhr week, especially the teacher that first introduced to me. So uh, let's get started. Now, I'm going to be using an illustration for this. Uh, so if you're watching the YouTube, you're good. But if you're watching the podcast, either... Go see it on the YouTube, or I will paint the picture as best I can. Uh, hopefully, you can have a good imagination to bear with me through this. So we're going to start with a line right through here. So we've got this line representing uh, the scale. And so from the far left, we have a far left, we have a far right, uh, we have a middle, we have a middle left, and we have a middle right. We've got these five views that branch throughout uh, this this big line, this big uh, teeter or whatever, the scale. And so we're going to start on the left and we're going to slowly make ourselves go out to here to the right. And so what we're going to see right here, and hopefully I write it big enough for y'all to see on the left, Christ against culture. Our first view is Christ against culture. I hope that you can see that right there. So that's our first view. Our first view is Christ against culture that we see. So obviously, like it, like it sounds like, Christ is against the culture. And there are multiple uh, Bible verses to talk about that. Let's say a Romans 12, 2, for example, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this culture that we see right here that, is, as we know, is faulty. Uh, do not be conformed to the culture. To just stay away from it. Be be of God. Be of everything. That's great. You know, that's that's true. That's very true. We should we should be of God. Uh, like again, like I said, none none of these are wrong. All these are these are all right. These are all these are all true. Um, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 uh, says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides in it forever. You do not love the world or the things in the world. This is Christ against culture that we see. And so this is the far extreme of the left this side of this scale. They, this 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 view where Christ hates culture. He he can't he can't stand it. And uh, who knows? Next week maybe I won't just go to this next one right here. Maybe I'll go to the far opposite side, the, this right side. This maybe I'll just you know keep going with the little extremes here. I don't know. Maybe we'll 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 see next week. And so we have this right side that I'm very excited to get into. Uh, I'm sure you can make guesses against it, but we will have that, that actual reveal next week. Right now, we're just focusing on the Christ against against the culture. Uh, so, the, like that whole view is like the Bible speaks negatively about the culture. Let's let's think about other ways, other cultures that think that think or you know that think negatively about the world's culture. Think about like. Uh, the extremity of the Amish people. So the Amish people, they don't they don't use any technologies. If they're 
when I say they're very old school, I mean, they are extremely old school. They don't use the technology. They don't use the cars. You know, you may, may or may not see them if you're in a rural area passing, you know, and traveling in, in carts pulled by horses, right? They're not using, you know, cars or vehicles or whatever. And so that's kind of the extremity that this views the culture. It's like, man, like not even doing touch it. Stay away from it. Be the, go like, go like, like be in the mountains, like a hermit, like stay away from this culture, man. Like this is not the good place to be. This is not where we want to be. And so in this Christ against culture model, culture outside the church is seen as corrupted beyond repair. It's this, this idea of a fallen world that, that, that cannot be fixed, which is again, a true concept. Like, our world is filled with sin, and the only real way to prepare is uh, the, 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 to fix it is when Christ comes back, you know, creates a new heaven, a new earth, and all those fun things. But us on our own, as, as people, we can't fix this. We can't um, repair this, and this the world is, is broken. Now, we can do things to kind of help, but in the, in the end, we have a very sinful world. All of us sin. All of us fall short. And the culture is like that, it's sinful and lustful and terrible and just beyond uh, reparation. And we are told that, you know, Christians should avoid and reject and separate from this culture according to this against the culture thing that we see. Uh, and so ideally what these types of Christians uh, try to do is they try to, you know, separate, they try to make their own culture inside the church and stay in that culture of the church instead of the culture of the world around them. Uh, and so that that's it. That's what the Christ against the culture talks about. That's what it is about. Uh, I encourage you to look into this more. Uh, I feel like this is a shorter video. I didn't expect it to be this short. Uh, so shoot, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about the reverse side of it. So... <laughs> We have Christ against the culture. I mean, I've talked about that plenty. Set chairs. I apologize. So now we're going to look at this Christ. It's Christ. Let's see what is it? It's it's Christ of. All right. So it's Christ of culture. Hopefully, you can see that. A little small, but this is so the Christ against culture, Christ of culture. So this is Christ of culture. This is the most positive view of of the relationship between the Christ and the culture. You can see over here, and so what this 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 view this model, it's it's seen like the culture is seen as inherently good and without any conflict to Christian truth. Which, you know, it can be debated, but so can Christ against culture. So can all these. These all can be debated. These all have pros. They all have cons. We can get into that. Um, we can probably get into, let's get into that as we wrap up this series. We'll go, yeah, we'll go this, these two next, this week, these two next week. We'll do this, this middle one, the final week, as long with the pros and cons of each of these. Because that's another plan. I feel like that sounds like a plan. So we see in the far right of this Christ of culture. Um, let's see. Proponents of this view attempt to view Christian uh, truths equally equally to cultural truths. Um, so if I'm going to use Christ of culture, let's say I'm preaching and I'm using Christ of culture um, as my way of doing it. Okay, well, I would talk about Star Wars or I'll talk about Marvel or I'll talk about current events, whatever. These things that are in the world that I could connect to you that I can connect um that I, that I can use to connect we see this a lot in uh youth ministry for thinking about youth pastors in middle school and high school and elementary even they're not breaking they're not super going into these deep theological discussions you don't see any of debates and discussions over the theology of free will and predestination and, 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 you know, in junior and, you know, adolescent churches. In fact, you don't really see it in any church of any size, um, adults or not. But you're not going to get any hard hitting topics there. You'll get some important ones, but nothing super deep. And so they'll use like these cultural references uh, to connect the Bible to to the listener, to to that culture, to that to that youth. 
It's, it's, it's an idea that, cult, that culture is good, that culture is God's idea, that uh, where people are, like, culture changes, but God doesn't change. Um, anyways, right. So but so Jesus is the Messiah of the culture. That's kind of where this comes from. Jesus is the Messiah of the culture. He's the Messiah of us, which is true. So Jesus is the Messiah of us, the, the Messiah of the culture. So Christ did come to save the people. Christ did come to save the culture, and that's why it is good. It has this idea that there is no tension between the between Christians and 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 culture. The culture um, is not like anti Christian, uh, which honestly today it kind of is. <laughs> So it, it takes what the culture gives you and it points to Jesus, just like I'm talking about in you know, the connections with, you know, whatever TV shows or references, current events, all the things. Um, now, if we adapt Jesus to the ever-changing culture, because like I mentioned before, like the culture changed, but Jesus, is, but Jesus doesn't. So if we if we connect Jesus to an ever-changing culture, our, our view of Jesus can get distorted. It can be... Um, can be tough, be really tough to listen to and, and 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 figure out what he is, what his identity is. So you know that's a con right there. We can write about that in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, got pre-evangelism. You know, it's uh, it, we, we can run into a danger of a social gospel. For those of you that uh, don't know what a social gospel is, it's like this um, happy-go-lucky story that you that you may tell your buddy who you're trying to convert to Christianity. It's like this, oh yeah, believe in Jesus and you will be saved, which is true stuff. It is, um, you know, to an extent, but it's also like it's just giving so much positivity that's it's almost it's almost it's so much positivity it's almost blasphemous if you understand what I'm saying. Like it's. Like Christianity is not this happy go lucky story where it's like, you know, believe in Jesus, pray to Jesus, accept him, you'll be saved, everything will be great. Truth is, life ain't great. You know, of course you will be saved if you know, if you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is that is the very method of salvation. But at the same time, it's also like, well, there's some hard hitting subjects in there. There's spiritual warfare, like there's some issues. That we had to deal with and interact with in this quest and in, in this pursuit of Jesus in this life of Jesus, um, so we get into that danger of being more social gospel, not not really given these hard hitting subjects, these all the things. Um, and so, but this is really good for preaching to the broken people. It's preaching, you know, where the sinners are. It's it's, it's really good at getting them in the door. Which is kind of why it's talked about in in our in our youth and our in our youth with our youth pastors. It's why they use that because it's good. It's great at uh, bringing people in. It's a great introductory to everything. Um, and honestly, if we're, if, we're, if we're thinking about it, like some of the middle schoolers and high schoolers that I've known. Now I'm recent out of high school, so I'm familiar with high school. Um, I've worked with middle school. At, I've served in the middle school aspect section of my church uh, throughout my high school career, so I'm familiar with them. I'm gonna be honest, like those are some of the most broken and and um traumatized people I've ever met. Like they've they, they go through some stuff. They really do. Some mental health stuff that's been an issue um in the past, you know, and, and now, like it's growing as it goes. You know, mental health is only getting worse, especially with our with our youth. So um so this 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 Christ of culture is really good at getting them, getting them in the door and getting them, you know, on that path uh, to that. And so what we when we see Christ of culture in, in, in the Bible is we see it in the Gospels a lot. When Whenever Jesus uses a parable, he's using uh, cultural significance in these parables to connect to his audience. It's a story. So you connect to an audience by telling stories. That's how that's how people come together. The stories. It's how bonds are made, connections, all the all the great things. And so Jesus would use parables, would use these stories to connect to his audiences. And so now, you know, you may read them like, wow, that was a great story. It had a great point. But if we think about it through the cultural context, I encourage you to look at or listen to a pastor who's talking about a parable through the cultural context of of um of the Romans, of the people in that time. You'll be very fascinated uh, by all the points, by all the uh, points in the story that reference the culture that Christ used 
that Jesus used to help bring people in. And that is the power of Christ of culture uh, and direct contradiction to Christ against culture. Again, neither one is wrong. Both are effective ways uh, of viewing the culture. Both are true ways. Um, and I can't wait to get more into it as we get into the other three in the next coming weeks. Uh, thank you again. One, thank you once again for listening in, for tuning in to the Living for His Glory podcast. Uh, I encourage you to stick with me in the next couple of weeks as we as we talk more about this, as we dive more into this. Uh, I'm very excited about what's to come. Um, we got some amazing stuff going on, and um, I really just can't wait. You're going to love this. Thank you again, and I will see you next week.